study can be complete without a proper understanding of textural development of the rock. Texture depends upon the rate of crystallization and composition of magma. Because texture give an idea about the rate of cooling, depth of cooling and also depend upon the crystallinity and Glenularity of the rock. Therefore, textural study is very important for the proper understanding of rock crystallization. The texture of a rock depends upon the degree of crystallization, grain size, shape, and mutual relationship of the grains. The texture provides direct evidence about the origin of the rock. An igneous rock is largely dependent upon the chemistry of the magma, but other factors like physical condition during emplacement, eruption and crystallization of the magma are more important for the texture. Similarly, the texture of the rock should in large part be a reflection of the condition under which it formed. Sometimes, like volcanic rocks or even dark color rock, maybe platonic also, we are not able to identify during field studies. The same rock while we will study under thin section then on the basis of mineral present we can name properly because during thin section studies we, we can identify the minerals present in a rock and then on the basis of mineral present we can name a rock like gabbro granite, diorite, porphyritic texture if present, then we can name porphyritic granite, etc. On the basis of relative size of the crystals, we can subdivide the igneous texture in two types, equigranular and inequigranular. Equigranular rocks are 
when the major constituent minerals all approximately the same size is called as equigranular or even grain in hand sample in equigranular when sufficient variation in size of the constituent minerals of any rock to change the overall fabric is known as in equigranular granular rocks are subdivided into three categories panidiomorphic hypidiomorphic allotriomorphic panidiomorphic when in any rock the majority of crystals are euhedral in shape then texture is known as panidiomorphic Hypidiomorphic when rock is made up of subhedral minerals is known as hypidiomorphic texture example is granites Allotriomorphic when most of the minerals are anhedral in shape is known as allotriomorphic texture example is aplite We can also add the prefix micro if the rocks are microcrystalline. Although it is common practice to use microgranular or microgranitic when the minerals are either anhedral or subhedral. Panidiomorphic means whatever grains are present all are euhedral in shape means all the faces are well developed second case is your hypidiomorphic when the grains are partially developed the faces are developed and undeveloped and lastly the allotriomorphic the grains are anhedral in shape means no face develop in equi granular texture are subdivided into three categories first is siri second is porphyritic texture and third is poikilitic texture inequi granular textures can be divided in so many types on the basis of different growth ratio of mineral present in any rock first is serrate when a continuous range in crystal size from small to large second is porphyritic texture when two size population of crystals are present in any rock large crystal enclosed by smaller ones the texture is known as porphyritic texture porphyritic texture is really a subtype but usage of term often confuses the beginner porphyritic rocks are composed of at least two minerals having a conspicuous difference in grain size the larger grains are termed as phenocris and the finer grains either matrix or ground mass porphyritic rocks have undergone two stages of cooling one at depth where the larger phenocris form and a second at or near the surface where the matrix grain crystallized both afanitic and phaneritic rocks can be porphyritic but 
द फॉर्मर आर फार मोर कॉमन मोस्ट ऑफन द पॉरफारेटिक टर्म यूज एज अ मॉडिफायर फॉर इंस्टेंस एन एंडेसाइट विथ विजिबल फिनोक्रिस्ट ऑफ प्लेजियोक्लेस फेल्स पार वुड बी टर्म एंड एंडेसाइट पॉरफायरी और पॉरफायरेटिक एंडेसाइट In porphyritic texture the large crystals are called phenocryst and are enclosed in ground mass that may be microgranular hemicrystalline or glassy If the ground mass is glassy the overall texture known as vitrophyric whereas a cryptocrystalline ground mass define a falsophyric texture a hemicrystalline ground mass called as a mesostasis if phenocrysts are clustered together in clots or aggregate the texture is called glomeroporphyritic if the possibility exist that large phenocryst did not actually grow in magma by igneous process then the non genetic term mega crystal used to describe such crystals the basis of different grain size present in a rock we can divide the texture into two types first is equigranular texture and second is in equigranular texture in equigranular texture means whatever grains present in a rock almost same size we can further divide the equigranular texture into three different types peridiomorphic hypidiomorphic and allotriomorphic Inequi granular texture are subdivided into three categories. First is serrate, second is porphyritic texture, and third is poikilitic texture. When two size populations of crystals are present in any rock, smaller crystal enclosed by large one, the texture is known as poikilitic texture. Poikilitic texture is only used when major rock forming minerals are involved thus excluding apatite or rutile needles and closed in biotite or epidote alteration In some literature the enclosing or host crystal is called an oikokrist whilst the enclosed crystal is termed the kedar crystal poikilitic texture seems best developed in the diorite monzonite syenite group of rocks often with the potash feldspar as the host A special type of poikilitic texture is known as ophitic where plagioclase is enclosed by clinopyroxene This is common in gabbroic or dolerytic rocks although it is more usual to find plagioclase only partially enclosed the resulting texture being called subophitic texture in in equigranular texture there is a two population of grains one must be bigger in size and another one may be different in size we can divide the in equigranular texture into the following types 
first is your porphyritic texture. In porphyritic texture, the bigger grain, which is known as phenocryst, are embedded in a fine grained ground mass. The two rate of cooling, first the bigger grains crystallize at greater depth and the magma in place at shallow level where the rate of cooling is faster and a smaller grains size form that is the ground mass. The apocalyptic texture in which the smaller grains are embedded in a bigger grain ground mass. Again, two rate of cooling. First, when the smaller grains are crystallized with slightly rapid rate of cooling and the magma in place at a shallow level where the rate of cooling is very slow and the bigger grains are formed. So in this way, we can find out how the different stages of magma crystallization and give rise to different textures. Similarly, the optic textures, where the intergrowth of pyroxenes and plesioclase is present. This is another type of pocalytic texture. 